Hello and welcome to episode 50, that's 5-0, of Two Wizards and a Mic, where a couple of old wizards, or nerds, whatever you want to call us, talk about D&D and hopefully give you advice on how you can have a better game or play better or just have more fun because, you know, at the end of the day, this is just a game. So, I am Shane. And I am Andrew. And today is a special episode, not just because we've actually hit 50 episodes, uh, but it's more important to mention that uh, today is uh, the, well, it's the official week launch uh, of uh, a special book called Monsters of the Dungeon, Brave the Darkness. Andrew, tell us all about it. All right. So the Kickstarter is live now and the link will be below. And uh, looking at it live, we're almost 40% funded, and it's basically been two days, so that's a really good start. And it goes till May 25th, and you're talking about a third-party book for 5th edition Pathfinder and OSR games, and this is the sixth book in our monster series. And we're looking at uh, having another one, which is a monster collection and a campaign book. So there's the cover. There's 100, and, 100 to 120 monsters with the uh, stretch goals. Seven different kinds of dungeons are, that's how we've ordered, organized the, the book. Should be about 160 to 175 pages. So likely our biggest book. And uh, there's over 300 quest ideas in this uh in this book the most we've ever done as well as over 20 magic items stretch goals to add the extra monsters stretch goals to add a trap section with some art and a dungeon map for each of the kind types of the dungeons as well by the artist and then an adventure and npc book as well so we have our team back as travis hansen is doing all the art he's done all the art for the entire series and we also have Gordon McAlpin doing the uh, art direction and graphic design. And um, yes, it's well underway. Uh, there's a trailer video, which is on this channel, you can watch as well. And um, yeah, we're pretty excited to uh, bring book number six. I can't believe it's been six books because I was just looking at uh, the books yesterday uh, when I pledged. And uh, the fascinating part is I can't believe it has been that long. It wasn't just the amount of books, but I was looking at the copyrights on some of the other ones. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> has this series been going on for, I, I, I've, I felt as, as we always point out, I felt a bit older. I felt really old, uh, but Hey, the books are amazing. So I have no complaints, but uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to books after this one because you've already kind of said a few things that I can't say online, but uh, I'm, I'm excited by what's what's coming. But this book is... Uh, everyone should pledge $475 for the Game Master level just because. No other reason. Just do it. Uh, <laughs> can we say that? I don't know. Can we request people? We could, um, we could, we could, uh, we could do that. The really good part too is that you know these days it's very easy to get a hold of creators. So we're, you know, we're on all the socials on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and now we also have our own Discord. We'll have that link below. So if you want to ask questions, clarify things about the book, um, if you have suggestions during the Kickstarter, if you want to be updated. All those things are very easy to do now. And um, yeah, our Discord is brand new. And there's a group of people on there already asking questions and chatting and talking in general about the game. And um, we'll, ha we'll even actually have some free content on the Discord as well. Yeah, which is cool. I joined the Discord. I was very happy to. And I was kind of jazzed, I think, on Tuesday when some people joined that I actually knew. So I was kind of, uh, you know, excited to see uh, the community really growing there because uh, 
it, well, you did it and invited me. I'm like, he's created a new Discord. That's kind of awesome. And I think that was, what, a week and a half ago, uh, roughly. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, join it because it is something that, uh, as you said, you can get a hold of the creator, uh, that guy. And, uh, and of course, you know, you might uh, find uh, maybe, maybe Travis will come by and visit for a bit. Uh, talk about art and all kinds of cool things and uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, so, yeah, we have, I mean, we have people, we're on the West Coast of Canada, Shane and I, we're people all across Canada to the East Coast and then all over the U.S. and then Europe, um, far north, the, the uh, Orkney Islands, way out in the northern wow. United Kingdom, uh, north of Scotland there. Uh, That's and cool. We have, yeah, we have people in Europe on there now and yeah it keeps growing i i mean that's one of my favorite parts about publishing is seeing people from all these places i mean we've sent books to kuwait uh hong kong um you know it's 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 really cool too to see countries where english is maybe not the biggest language too but yeah kuwait hong kong um quite a few people in norway like that's quite a long way and finland russia um, although now with the current situation, some of those customers are using a different address, which I understand. Um, yeah. We've had people, yeah, in the Middle East and uh, Mexico, a, a bunch of people from the Caribbean, actually, quite a few. Really? Um, That's cool. Yeah. And then in the U.S., obviously, the big states like Texas. Texas is huge. That's our number one place where we have customers. New York and California, but then uh, Oregon and of all places, Rhode Island, those places are really well represented too. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the best part, I mean, as you said, is, is having this wide spread group of people that are wanting to support what you're doing and, uh, and also what we're doing here on this show. Uh, but still, uh, that is, I think, the the holy grail of, of building community online is that you have you have decided years ago, like, I'm going to make something cool, and you've made a whole bunch of them, and now people are are, are seeing, you know, oh, hey, the this book is cool. I want to, oh, is there another one? Oh, I can get that one too. Or, hey, is there another one? I can totally get that. Um, and it's, it's, it's awesome to see because too many people, times I've run into communities that die off because they just don't create too much. They just want to ha kind of hang out. And hanging out's one part, but hanging out and 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 supporting someone and creating something uh but also offshoots of that, you know, like stuff that that could come 6 months a year down the road. Uh you know, there's all kinds of stuff that we could do together uh that I think would be fun. Uh you know, like uh playing D&D &D for a night with people from Finland. Wouldn't that be cool? Granted, half of them might be asleep, or we might be asleep. I mean, who knows? Uh, but it's all about the opportunity and, and actually uh, being able to to nurture something. Because uh, I don't know, I just have I've I just recently had a couple of emails from people uh, that have said, "Hey, am I playing any D and D online right now?" Because uh, a couple of uh, games have kind of you know they've ended the campaigns, they've got to the the final climax, and. Uh, I don't know. But they're just like, yeah, I, I, would, I need to take a break for an, uh, for a year. It's like, oh, well, so we have a bunch of players out there potentially that, uh, which I, by the way, we should invite them to the thing. Uh, I didn't think of that yesterday when I was talking to them. But uh, yeah. What are the reward levels uh, for the Kickstarter? All right. Yeah. So the uh, specifics about how you can support the Kickstarter, the different re reward levels. So if you just want to add a dollar, you become a hero which means you now have access to the Kickstarter, you have access to the backer kit. So this way, if you want to change your mind or if you want to see how the Kickstarter goes, you can you can join it and then you can be you can have access to the add-ons later, which include other books um, that we've published and other re rewards. Um, then the basic uh, pledge level is, and these are Canadian uh, dollar amounts. So twenty dollars, you're a fighter and you get the PDF. You get the digital version of Monsters of the Dungeon, which in American dollars is 14 US, which is quite a good deal in my opinion. 
and uh, you're getting, you know, a 160 page book uh, that's really high quality, fully illustrated, all in color, art on almost every single page. Then for 37 Canadian, you're getting the cleric level, which is getting the soft cover book plus the PDF. And the next level is magic user for $47. You're getting the hardcover book and the PDF included. And uh, now if you want to get a digital version of the project, the best deal of all, in my opinion, is the $50 Canadian level, the palette in there. You get every single PDF. You get all six PDFs for $50 Canadian, which is an amazing deal. It's only about 37 US dollars, and you're getting six PDFs with over 600 monsters. So that I think that's a fantastic deal. Um, then the next levels from Ranger to Druid to Thief to Illusionist to Monk, all of these levels, this is a reward where you can get the hardcover book, the new one, the dungeon book, plus the PDF, and then you can add on one of the other books each level. So the Ranger level is just adding one book on, and then you can go all the way up to the Monk level where you add all five of the previous books. So most of these rewards are available to um, all over the world. Uh, however, some of those larger packages are only for the US, Canada, and the UK. Then we have the final level, which is the Game Master. And that one actually only has, that has a limit of only 10. And that one includes all the books, all five hardcovers that have been published, plus the new one and all their PDFs. You get all the mere PDFs for our setting. You get all the NPC books we've done. You get a custom made 20 sided dice. You get a character sheet with art of a character of yours done by Travis Hansen with a stat block, just like the pages in the monsters books. Plus you can have an online game run for your group. So that is uh, that's the full package right there. That is very cool. I say that a lot here, but everything being cool, but that to me is just one of the coolest things because um, as I was saying, I, I love the community's growth. I love how uh, communities in general grow and it's stuff like this that, uh, that helps because um, my day job is uh, helping people on do things online all over the place. And it's, probably one of the heartbreaking the probably the most heartbreak in my career is when you get some career some some uh, communities going and uh, then they don't sustain them uh, mm -hmm. because they get busy with other things or whatever uh, not their fault it's just how life is but uh, but still you know it's like I get so excited when uh, I just see communities organically grow and there's somebody there to nurture it and love it so good on you sir good on you so uh, what kind of so is for the game that they can potentially have you run. Uh, are we talking like just one session? Or are we talking like eight, ten years of a, of a one long campaign? <laughs> <laughs> the longest D and D game ever. Uh, no, we're talking one session. Um, however, though, as you say, you know, in, with communities, we've, you know, during the pandemic, we actually added an online group mm -hmm. to our um, repertoire to our community. So there is a local group who hopefully will be meeting in person starting this summer. And then um, we have an online group as well. So you never know how things can grow. Like you say, in that community that we've been a part of, there are people who've done artwork for us, people who've helped with editing over the years, um, people who've made helped make videos for us. You know, I even have, you know, some family members who are, in charge of recycling and in charge of packing for shipping. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's, there's lots of opportunity for the community and yeah, that reward that's for one, uh, one online game. 
That's cool. I mean, even one I, I've played many times where you play one session because there's, you know, a, a one shot, you know, two, three hours and uh, and it's a blast. And, sure. you know, you don't have to you don't have to think about your character beyond, you know, the next three hours. And uh, so that's where you can either be non-committal, be like, oh, this character's going to do some crazy stuff. He's going to do some amazing things or, uh, you know. Yeah, I just it'll be a flash in the pan, you know. It'll be. So you're know, talking about like that Leroy episode. Jenkins. That's what you're talking. About. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I should also mention that on the Kickstarter page, we have finished the first chapter of the book. So it's divided into seven kinds of dungeons, and the first chapter of the book is the arcane dungeons chapter, basically a dungeon that a wizard would be using, or maybe one that's been abandoned by a wizard, maybe the bottom of the wizard tower. And that dungeon with about 20 monsters or so has already been finished, 15, 20 monsters. And we've done all the artwork. We've done the layout. So you can actually nice. download that right now from the Kickstarter page and use it tonight with your group. And oh, it's wait, an let example. me go uh, find this here. Where is it? Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Download, download. Oh, it's somewhere in here. I know it's in here. I'll find it. Yeah, it's right there. Download there the preview. Go. So you can download it right there and take a look at what we, you know, this is an example of what the book's going to look like. There's the layout, there's the introduction and the credits. Here's the table of contents. Of course, it's shorter because it's just a small booklet at this point. And then we've, we have, you know, this is how the book starts. You're going to meet this you group meet of heroes. In a tavern. Yeah, they meet this in a tavern. Cool. There's a group of heroes. Each one of them will be in one of the chapters. And then here you have the chapter page for the arcane dungeon. So you have encounter tables, events. Sorry, I just got distracted by no Ooh. insults, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's back. And um, yeah, so here now each chapter is also going to have an action shot like this with the hero and one of the monsters. And here we have the first hero we introduce is Brock the Brave, who's a paladin. Nice. And he's dealing with these aberrations that are mentioned further on in the booklet. So we, we give you the stats for the hero, for the, this NPC. And then here we go with the creatures, the animated wizard's hat, which can attach itself on your head and control what you do. <laughs> that is and then so we cool. have a large creature, the arcane dragon, which is a shape-shifting magic using dragon quite powerful there you go and then we have the arc mage ignatius of nox so this is a an arc mage character to give you an idea of what an arc mage uh, could be like and it's linked to our world of mirror but you don't have to use that lore and then here we have the star sort of of this section this is the blabber blub who's in the action shot we just showed you so this is a weird aberration sort of inspired by a ghost from ghostbusters and the beholder kind of all blended together here we have the cauldron Ooh, of chaos wow. so there are many many oh, constructs cool. in the book and this is one of them nice Chronomancer. Yeah. So a time traveling magic user. I think this is a great, great creature character that you can use in your game. I haven't actually read this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just noticing all these little uh, nods here and there. Just like, that, yeah. So you saw the Easter egg, the time traveler's strife. Yeah, I did. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And if you notice there, on each page, there's a quest section. So not only do we give you oh, adventure yeah, right here. at the beginning of the book, but we actually give three little quest ideas for each creature. Nice. Yeah. So the I minimum you're getting is about 350 of those, but there'll probably be more. So here we have the flagler, this creature who can really flagler. find its way around the dungeon almost... It almost can get anywhere. And um, CR7, so pretty tough. And then I love oh, wow. this, ne this next one. I'm like, why make a creature with many eyes? Why don't you just make the creature one giant eye? <laughs> the Oculus. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love these. Oh, my God, this is awesome. All 
All right. And here's the passenger. So you, you're going down a passage, you're really low level, you know, just a normal passage in a dungeon. What could go wrong? Well, this is what could go wrong. This creature camouflages itself as the actual passage. <laughs> Passenger gar is a treasure vault. Elf knights are trapped by it. Oh, this is cool. Okay, here we have one that, of course, it started with the, the name of the monster. I was like, you got to have a monster where it's called the pillar of the community. <laughs> and uh, this one is actually, I've used this recently, play tested it. And it's pretty nasty because each of those fists can punch and it can bite oh, you. Oh, wow. So it actually has five attacks. Um, it's CR3, so it's not, it doesn't do a ton of damage to sort of medium or high-level characters. But for low-level characters, this thing would be a menace. <laughs> Piercing damage on the, the bite, bludgeoning damage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, level one player. How are you doing? Punch, punch, punch. All right. So another, Ooh, this another, is cool. another one of the many aberrations. So this is a spell book that actually has spell powers, magic powers, and um, can fly around. And uh, yeah, it'd be a good one to, to, to use against low level characters again. I love that. Look at that. That is so cool. The art. Ah, oh. I mean, Travis is. Love you, Travis. Amazing. Yeah. And here we have the some of all of tears, all tears, not fear. Some of all tears. Um, there are many undead in this book, and this is one of them. This floating uh, monster that can attack with its tendrils, or it has this horrible groan, sort of, sort of reminiscent of the cloaker. Groan of agony. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here we have another one Ooh. of the very large monsters, two pages, the Terra Sphinx. So the idea with this is that it's a guardian of the entrance to the dungeon or an important place in the dungeon. And the party is going to have to deal with this creature. And uh, if they upset it, it's probably going to be uh, a rather bad idea. Oh, that is a cool... Oh. Yeah, that reminds me of like the gates in uh, the never ending story kind of thing. That's right, so cool. right. The film right. version, of course. So now we have the not the familiar, but the unfamiliar. So this is a nasty little fiend who pretends to aid a spellcaster and then starts causing all kinds of chaos. I love that's the look on its face. That yeah. is astounding. Yeah, that was Travis's idea for the <laughs> for the look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then our last one is uh, a horrible fiend who can move a bit, and then it sort of sits on the wall, and it can reach out with tentacles and grab characters, but and that damages them. Of course, they, he can also try to put them into his mouth. And if you look, it actually swallows the the character into a void. So uh, the this Doom is, of uh, Horrors. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely inspired by Tomb of Horrors, and uh, yeah, this avoid would be a, the a void for the party to deal with. <laughs> I gotta say that uh, that is pretty cool. And oh look, the there's oh, a hey. OGL. Oh. Whoa. Wow. Hey, that's amazing. I'm surprised yeah. that. Uh... <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I love it. That is so cool. <laughs> the fact that you have a little taste of the book out there uh, via the Kickstarter, that is that is amazing. Um, that, actually was, um, that was Gordon's idea, the person who's done the layout and um, really helped bring the books to a new level he joined us with monsters of the city so he's done monsters of the city monsters of the wilderness monsters of Feyland 2 and now he's doing monsters of the dungeon and that was his idea hey let's let's make a small booklet section of the book and people can download it fantastic idea oh totally because it's i mean that's the one thing that a lot of people i think on maybe not necessarily just kickstarter but books online in general uh 
would like a little, you know, a bit more because they can't touch the thing yet, you know, because yeah. it doesn't exist yet. Yeah. So being able to actually have a little taste of that is is nice, and uh, I think puts a lot of people at ease because mm -hmm. Kickstarters have a reputation, shall we say? Uh, mm -hmm. Some of them uh, don't go too well, but uh, but of course the uh, the ones created by uh, you know there's this organization called uh, World of Mir, Kwood Publishing, World of Mir dot com. And uh, they've done some really amazing stuff. Sorry, they. It's all Andrew. It's all Andrew. He does everything, uh, right? He does, he does all. He... <laughs> <laughs> it's actually but, uh, but yeah. what I do is each project I hire a team. And uh, this time it happens to be a three-person team. And uh, yeah, we can, three people actually can do quite a lot. Well, yeah, I mean, especially when you have people like Travis as well, who is you're not his only client i'm sure like that he's yeah. out there creating all kinds of stuff because you see him all over the place in the world of D and mm -hmm. uh but you know his his style is just it's it's fun like it's not that boring to look at and i'm sorry for those who are listening to this whole thing because uh i encourage you to uh, go to the kickstarter page and uh and, and and follow along if you can but yeah i mean when you have talent like Travis uh, and the the guy doing the sorry, I don't actually know. Is it sorry? What is the gentleman doing the layout? His name is Gordon McAlpin, and his book and his layouts are are so they're clean, they're nice, mm -hmm. they're easy, they're friendly. You know, and and I'm glad to hear that he's actually you know giving you like, hey, we should do a booklet and that kind of stuff because that's sometimes you don't get that kind of work or that kind of suggestion from yeah, you know, somebody no, definitely... just doing the layout. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm open to their suggestions. Um, you know, there have been, there has been a case too where uh, once Travis asked me, could you tweak this monster a bit? Um, and then once where he said, I don't, I don't really think we should do this one. And I said, that's fine. Um, so no, that's I definitely good. listen to those two gentlemen and take their, you know, take their input and, um, you know, for the most part, they're they don't have any suggestions or anything like that. But uh, and that's the same for me. I mean, I hired them because of what they do, so I don't give them too many notes. I mean, Travis has done probably five hundred and fifty illustrations for Kwood Publishing now, and I maybe have talked to him about a dozen of them, and most of those changes were very minor. Like, could you right, add right. wings to this character? Um, could you not have glasses on that character? Um, so very, you know, very minor changes, and um, they've been really good to work with. I mean, I've been really lucky. Well, yeah, and and you can tell, like, you can tell that over time as the books have evolved, that more fun is being had putting them together. Um, yeah. you know, it's not just a resource book, uh, like, oh, here's a book of 400,000 monsters. It's actually, here's a story that goes along with these characters because they are not just things to encounter and beat on or be beat by, you know, there's, there's a story going, there's an existence of that. There's, there's life behind them. And, uh, and, and the option you could use that suggestion life of where these guys come from or not. It, it doesn't matter. You can take take either or or both, but um, I'm excited. I mean, I I am a D and D fan, and I love playing it, and I love everything about it. And uh, and next week, I'm sure we'll talk all about what's happened more recently <laughs> with the wizard. Yes. Yeah. Just check <laughs> checking the door. Okay. Yeah. No, no one's visiting today. Exactly. But uh, any sort of final things before we cut it off there? I would I would encourage everyone to take a look at the links below. Check out the Kickstarter. It's going to be going till May 25th. So still, still almost four weeks. And uh, yeah, take a look. Like I said, if, if you're not interested in the printed books, the digital package, the Paladin reward level is an amazing deal. Um, of course, we make our reward levels so that the project can be finished and the artist 
and uh, the team can be paid. However, we want to have a reasonable price for people who are following along at backers. And uh, we think we do that, and especially that level. Paladin, amazing option. I, I highly recommend it. I actually did that, I think, for the last book because I realized I didn't have a hardcover for one of them. Uh, and I thought, I really want the hardcover. I'm really sorry. I'm going to give you more money to get that. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, this actually would be for the PDFs, the Paladin level. Oh, that one. Sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's all six PDFs, including this new book. And then, you know, as Shane said, if you want to take the option to get the printed books, you can include books that have already been published. And, um, you know, the target date to have this project finished is by the end of the year. However, the PDFs and the books that are already published, those we will probably start getting out um, the PDFs by the end of June. So you can nice. get those quite, quite much, you know, much faster. And then the whole project itself, we actually have done the manuscript, most of it for the new book. So it could actually be done much earlier than our nice. target. That is cool because I know that uh, sometimes people ask that question, mm -hmm. you know, is this going to be ready for X date? Because, you know, they might want to give it as a gift or something like that. So yeah. Uh, yeah. instead of just pledging for one book, buy a whole bunch because, you know, why not? Give them away to give as presents because I that's what I've done <laughs> for some of them. I've given some of them away. So, uh, but yeah, I highly recommend. Well, thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I certainly hope that uh, if you listen to this episode, you can, of course, follow along with the uh, the PDF available at the uh, the link down below at the Kickstarter Monsters of the Dungeon one. Um, just go to Kickstarter, you'll find it. And, uh, and otherwise, uh, we'll see you all next week for episode 51, and uh, we'll probably talk more about this book because, you know, stuff happens and you know maybe he'll write another book uh all in the you know this coming weekend and you'll know, want to add that to the list <laughs> all right uh thank you all and uh we'll see you guys next week bye bye later <laughs>